The Hyundai Kona Electric launched back in 2018 with a headline grabbing range of around 280 miles, which at the time was pretty much enough to blow all of its rivals out of the park. Fast forward three years and actually it's not that uncommon to see a car with more than 300 miles on a single charge. This is the new Kona Electric and it's been given a few nips and tucks. It's got a more aerodynamic front end and there's some changes inside as well. But what's it like as a package? Is it still as competitive as it once was? We'll find out in this video review, but before we do, make sure you subscribe to the Driving Electric YouTube channel, hit the bell icon so you never miss a video, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It's only been a year since the last time Hyundai updated the Kona Electric, but that was merely mechanical, helping squeeze out an extra few miles of range. Both that car and the one we're driving here use the same 201 brake horsepower motor and 64 kilowatt hour battery pack as the previous version. According to official figures, it can now manage 300 miles on a single charge, although on our test we managed about 4 miles per kilowatt hour, which works out to around 256 miles of range. By all accounts, that's pretty good. Changes to the UK government grant for electric cars mean that the Kona is more expensive than it was before. The grant has been slashed by £500 and no longer applies to cars over £35,000. With the smaller 39 kilowatt hour battery, all Kona electric trim levels still qualify for the grant. But if you want the larger battery, only some qualify, which means there's a big price difference, around £5,000 between the premium trim and the range topping ultimate specification, which we're driving here. It's actually fairly easy to spot this facelifted Kona Electric. This flat front end works wonders for efficiency, but it also gives it a more Tesla style appearance. You've got these new LED headlights, and there's some new alloy wheels and some reshaped bumpers as well. So it's actually a major overhaul of the way this car looks. There's loads of paint colors to choose from, including this car's vibrant blue, but unfortunately the limey green yellow color from the previous car has been dropped for this facelifted model. The 64 kilowatt hour version of the Kona Electric has plenty of range, but the large battery means it takes over 10 hours to charge from a normal home wall box. That's enough to do overnight, but if you end up using a three pin plug in an emergency, it will take nearly 33 hours to fully charge from flat. Hyundai speaks of connecting the car to a 100 kilowatt charger in its marketing literature, but truly its max speed is 77 kilowatts. That means the car can charge from zero to 80% in 47 minutes at a compatible public rapid charger. The charging port is right at the front under this flap, which actually makes life so much easier when plugging in. And it's unusual, it would have been much easier to turn the petrol car's normal fuel filler cap into a charging door. There are a few changes inside the Kona Electric too, the most notable of which is this fully digital instrument cluster, which takes the place of the more conventional dials in the old car. It looks a little bit awkward in this kind of square display, but overall it's crystal clear and the graphics are easy to read. The central screen looks great. It's a 10.25 inch display and it's got stuff like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, built-in sat-nav with charging infrastructure and a range meter. It's actually really useful tech. It's all really simple and easy to use and it's responsive as well. The rest of the cabin is similar to the model that came before it in that it's functional and practical, if a little bit dull and uninspiring to look at. If you want a car that feels instantly special the second you sit in here, then you're probably looking at something like a Peugeot E2008 or even a new Vauxhall Mokka E instead. The big battery version of the Kona Electric is available in premium trim and above, which means all versions come with heated seats and a heated steering wheel all-round parking sensors and that excellent infotainment setup and wireless phone charging. If you go for a top-spec Ultimate model like this for £5,000 more than the premium, remember, then all you get is a sunroof, a head-up display and ventilated leather seats. You also get something called Highway Drive Assist, which is essentially adaptive cruise control paired with lane centering assistance. When you pull away in the Kona, everything feels really smooth and controlled. If you leave it in the car's eco setting, that improves things like efficiency and range. And honestly, that's what we would do. We really don't mind it at all. This is not a sporty car. It's all about feeling smooth and, and relaxed driving a car like this. It just makes more sense to treat the Kona as a cruiser or a really accomplished town car and leave it in its eco settings with all the efficiency gains that come with that. It rides smoothly and being an electric car, it's quiet most of the time. Only is there a little bit of wind and road noise on the motorway. Overall, it's just a really relaxing car to drive. But sometimes you just want to indulge a little bit and with just over 200 horsepower under the bonnet, the Kona is actually pretty quick. In sport mode, 0 to 60 miles an hour takes less than eight seconds. And if you're aggressive enough, you can spin the front wheels. But 
in a family SUV like this, you just rarely feel the need. The layout of the interior hasn't really changed, so the Kona Electric is still a practical SUV, despite being small enough to easily park and nip through town without worrying about width restrictors. There's a 332 litre boot, which is big enough for a couple of suitcases or a weekly shop, and if you fold down the seats, this expands to 1,114 litres. The Kona's sister car, the Kia Enero, beats these numbers on both counts. Headroom and legroom are okay, but adults probably wouldn't want to sit three abreast in the back for very long. Even though there's no hump in the floor, the seat in the middle is raised and not all that comfortable. The Kona Electric isn't as practical as some of its rivals and the cabin is a little bit dull. And yes, this top spec model does now miss out on the government's recently reduced plug-in car grant, but those are just small niggles in what is actually a really capable electric car. It may not be head and shoulders above its rivals when it comes to range anymore, but that just goes to show what a capable car it was when it launched three years ago. Go for one of the cheaper models with still a really strong list of standard equipment and you've got a really decent family electric car. That is what we would do. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.